mission is to assess the nature of the threat. Our job is to keep them alive. Do not engage the enemy. Ten seconds later. There haven't been that many games in 2023 that have had me all that excited. But Trepang 2 is one such game that I've been waiting for for quite some time, and it's finally here. I first heard about this game back at the end of 2019 when G-Man Lives did a video covering the demo that's been available on Steam. The demo of Trepang 2 was an impressive vertical slice and mission statement of what the full game was intending to be which was a spiritual successor to one of the greatest shooters ever made, Monolith's 2005 masterpiece, Fear. Yes, I said it, Fear is a masterpiece, and you can't call yourself a first-person shooter fan if you've never played it. But he's right. What was exciting about Trepang 2, based solely on the demo, was that the team seemed to be focusing entirely on replicating the still impressive and incredibly fun balls-to-the-wall combat of Fear, and then essentially dialing everything up well past 11. The original Fear is often remembered as being a horror game, and it was definitely marketed that way, with the little girl Alma being featured prominently on the posters and trailers. Yeah, there are definitely some spooky scenes in Fear, and a creepy atmosphere with a strong influence from Japanese horror. But I honestly don't think it's that scary in retrospect, and I would argue that Fear 2 is a lot scarier, despite not actually being a better game overall. And typically, we don't talk about Fear 3. You're a fucking disappointment. The original Fear saw you playing as the Point Man, a member of an elite unit called Fear, which is a confusing acronym for First Encounter Assault Recon. Surely you'd want to do recon before you assault, but this is America, and Fearer doesn't sound as cool, I guess. What do you think of the new Point Man? Well, he's pretty cute. The game sees you taking on a conspiracy involving a company called Armacam, who have developed an army of telepathically controlled clone troopers that have gone rogue. There is a number of reasons as to why Fear was so revered for its combat, with probably the most revolutionary thing being its AI, being incredibly realistic for how reactive it was, using goal-orientated action planning that dictated how enemies would behave based on how a combat scenario was playing out. If you got the jump on an enemy squad, they would likely freak out and fall back to try and regroup, becoming more alarmed as more of their teammates died. Or conversely, they would be a lot more aggressive if you were playing poorly, and they would employ tactics to distract and flank you. Which, combined with how large the arenas or play spaces would be during these combat encounters, made the combat always feel really engaging, since one battle could play out several different ways. It was also quite a challenging game. This impressive combat loop was heightened by the game's very John Woo-styled visuals, the way your guns would play havoc with the environment, creating lots of large effects like dust and smoke and bullets spark on metal surfaces, or how lobbing a grenade would send the clutter and shells flying throughout a scene. All of this action could be slowed right down too with the game's bullet time mode, meaning you could watch enemies ragdoll backwards from a devastating shotgun blast, or disappear into a black-red mist from a well-thrown grenade. Not that this was exactly unique, since the Max Payne games had basically pioneered the bullet time action mechanic, and later games would also feature similar bullet time mechanics, like Neversoft's Gun, that also released in 2005, the underrated Stranglehold in 2007, and of course the Red Dead series too. You finally came. I came. Oh, thank you, thank you. But there was just something about how explosively over the top and cathartic Fear's combat was. And even in 2023, some 18 years later, it still holds up incredibly well, and the sequels were just never able to recapture it. Which is where Trepang 2 comes in, developed by just four guys from Canada, and as you can probably guess, running on the Unreal 4 engine. As I mentioned earlier, the vertical slice demo of Trepang 2 showcased the mission statement of updating the core of Fear's combat in a new engine and taking the action up a few gears, all of which has remained true throughout the somewhat short campaign in the full game. 
What I wasn't expecting was just how familiar the overall experience would be to Fear, since the similarities don't just end at the gameplay. In Trepang 2, you play as Subject 106, who breaks out of a black site and joins an elite group called Task Force 27, who are going up against a massive tech corporation called Horizon, with its own private army that is conducting supernatural experiments. Yeah, wow, that's an incredibly similar plot to Fear. And much to my surprise, Trepang 2 does lean a lot more into horror than I was expecting it to, but I'll talk about that more a bit later. When the time comes. After the opening mission, you arrive at the Task Force secret base, which is the central hub of the game, where you can customize 106's outfits, restock and customize your weapons with upgrades, and decide which mission or side up you want to do next. This part of the game, funnily enough, gave me a lot of flashbacks to Metal Gear Solid 5, with the whole process of selecting a mission, getting on the helicopter and flying into the mission zone, and then exfiltrating out of the area at the end of the mission and heading back to base. It's not an exact replication of the process of course, but every time I ran towards that helicopter to head out to the next mission, I would remember the number of times I climbed on board the chopper in Metal Gear and watched Quiet leap up as I watched Mother Base fly by. The Task Force base is also like Mother Base in that there's not really a lot you can do there either. There's also a later campaign mission that felt oddly reminiscent of Metal Gear Solid 1, that had you infiltrating a hidden base out in the snow, taking an elevator to the facility, and crawling through quite a lot of vents. Those mice are Alaskan field mice. Uh, no. No, they're not. Master. Are you feeling okay? Once you do get into the thick of the action, however, Trepang 2 offers some of the most brutal, visceral, and satisfying combat I've experienced in a first-person shooter since Doom Eternal, though without the heavy emphasis on resource management. All of the guns are incredibly loud, and you can just feel the devastation they cause, as just like in Fear, the game makes heavy use of so many over-the-top particle effects. Sparks fly everywhere as bullets tear through the environment, Dust clouds erupt and impact on walls and columns and enemies will redecorate the floors and walls with blood splatters. It truly is a stunning looking game from such a small team, and the game runs incredibly smoothly. I only encountered lag occasionally during my first playthrough, and I'm almost 100% certain this was due to the fact I was recording footage at the same time. And holy shit, if you want to know just how effects heavy the game is, just look at the file size of my captures. But the Fox engine came out on top. Thanks, Fox Engine. Trepang 2, of course, makes use of a bullet time mechanic, just like Fear, which never stops being fun to use, both because of how awesome it looks to slow down the absolute havoc you're wrecking, and because of the obvious tactical advantages it gives you, like being able to line up enemies to be taken out one after the other in quick succession. You do have to be a bit more strategic with how you use bullet time, however, as unlike how Fear's slow-mo gauge would recharge automatically, the one in Trepang 2 is filled up from killing enemies, which forces you to think about when you use it in bigger scale fights, when tougher enemies start getting introduced. Trepang 2 also reincorporates the melee mechanics from Fear as well, with you being able to pull jumping and diving kicks that hilariously send enemies ragdolling across the room. But as I said earlier, Trepang 2 takes all these fundamentals from Fear and dials everything up to 11, and it does this by adding in a few new additions that are absolutely ridiculous. The first being a grab mechanic taken straight out of Crisis, another game that still holds up really well, where stunned enemies can be grabbed and used as either a human shield, or more hilariously, can be thrown either at other enemies or literally across entire rooms since Subject 106 is superhuman. The other melee mechanic is an incredibly overpowered slide ability that you can activate with just the push of a button that allows you to dash out of harm's way quickly, or right into a group of enemies that knocks them all off their feet, which always looks funny. So you combine all these mechanics together and you can create some incredibly fun and satisfying kill sequences where you slide into a group, activate bullet time and kill one enemy, leap into the air and kick another dude in the head, and kill the last goon as you're flying back from the momentum of kicking the other dude to death. Probably the only mechanic I found to be a bit lacking was the camouflage mode, again another mechanic from Crisis, and this was mainly because of how fast it would run out, literally in a matter of seconds, which kind of limited how you could use it. 
whereas the one in Crisis would deplete based on how fast you were moving, and helped encourage stealth gameplay should the player want to take that approach. Thank you, boss. As you progress throughout the campaign, you can unlock various upgrades for your guns, like scopes, silencers, and even different ammo types, all of which further help make you feel even more unstoppable as you get better at the game's mechanics. You can even unlock the ability to dual wield weapons, yes, including the shotgun, and this is about as broken as it sounds, but in the best possible way. I also think it's quite telling of how confident the developers felt about the gameplay on offer here, that there is a combat simulator available right from the start of the game, where you can play against waves of enemies and arenas, with more becoming available as you play throughout the campaign. Dealing with pissed off dead chicks is a little outside my area of expertise. As I said earlier, Trepang 2 does contain quite a bit of horror to it, which was a surprise for me, although it doesn't lean into it anywhere near as much as the Fair games did. It's also predominantly more of a Resident Evil kind of horror, if that makes sense, with a focus on biological experiments that have created monsters, highlighted in a really cool set piece in one of the earlier campaign missions. But there is some stuff that felt reminiscent of Fear for sure, like one side mission had you resetting some servers underground while you're constantly attacked by these ghost-like entities, similar to Fear 2. And how weird is it that I would play another game this year that features its own interpretation of the backrooms? That was unexpected and genuinely unnerving, even though it did feel a little like it came out of nowhere. Ultimately, I would say that Trepang 2 isn't anywhere near as scary as Fear 2 was. It certainly has its moments of creepiness sprinkled throughout, but the horror just isn't anywhere near as consistent as it was in Fear 2, and honestly, what isn't terrifying about a mentally deranged ghost girl repeatedly trying to jump your bones? Which brings me to the few negatives I have from my experience with Trepang 2, with the first and most grievous issue being that I feel the game suffers from what I call shitty boss syndrome. You probably already have some idea of what I mean by this, in that the game is by and large an incredibly fun experience, until you're forced into a boss encounter that isn't so much a test of your skill with the mechanics, so much as it is just a test of your patience against a complete bullet sponge of an enemy. There are about three boss fights in the Jorvik Castle mission alone, which I honestly just didn't enjoy due to the bosses just being absolute fun sponges, and I feel that I spent most of these fights running around the arenas looking for more ammo and health than I actually did fighting the boss. This was also an issue I felt that Doom Eternal suffered from as well, particularly in the Ancient Gods DLC. Probably the most frustrating sequence was in the second to last mission, where you have to destroy a large set of generators around the arena in a set time limit, all the while enemies constantly respawn, and you have to repeat this process like three times, before finally you have to take on an assault chopper as the end level boss, all without a fucking checkpoint. Okay, there is a checkpoint once you get the helicopter to about half health, but unless you manage to do that on your first try, you then have to repeat the sequence all over again, and it just wasn't fun. It just wasn't fun! My other issue was to do with the presentation, and one specific aspect, as the game looks fantastic, don't get me wrong. I just felt that there was a bit of inconsistency with how reactive and how static the environments were. There is quite a bit of destruction simulation in the game, with areas where columns are made of chunky matrix and night that blast off when shot at, and even a few instances where entire walls and floors could be ripped apart and destroyed with grenades, like this abandoned house level. But there is also quite a lot of environments that are just completely static and don't react to your guns. Things that you would assume to be interactable or destructible just simply aren't, like Wooden boxes are seemingly bulletproof, and metal barrels often don't do so much as flinch from bullets. It just feels a bit disappointing considering if you go back to something like Crisis, you can destroy pretty much everything you see in that game. Your bullets would destroy tables and shelves, and if you threw an enemy into a wooden crate, it would break into pieces from the impact. The underrated Stranglehold from 2007 was also another game that featured a strong emphasis on destructible environments, with pretty much every arena featuring structures that could be destroyed, 
and this was even encouraged as many objects could be strategically destroyed in order to kill enemies, which was similarly hilarious when combined with the game's bullet time mechanic. Or even something like Max Payne 3. With this office building shootout, the bullets would tear holes in the cubicle walls and destroy your cover, forcing you to keep moving. Can I also just say that I forgot how good Max Payne 3 was? I only intended to capture footage from this sequence, but I ended up replaying the entire game, which is partially why this video is taking so long. I mean, look at it, this is from 11 years ago. Might make the pain of leaving somewhat easier. Part of me does understand though why there probably isn't as much destruction simulation in Japan 2 as I think there should be, and it's probably down to the fact that this game has been made mostly by four guys. And the fact it even looks this good given there's already so much going on visually with all the particle effects and the gore, it's a wonder it runs so smoothly sometimes. I'm also totally willing to admit it's a personal bias on my part, as I've been obsessed with destruction simulation in games since I played Black, also back in 2005. Wow, a lot of great games came out that year, huh? Memories of my previous visit here lurked in the shadows. At the end of the day, Trepang 2 certainly does a lot more right than it does wrong in my opinion, and I think it definitely achieved its goal in recapturing that frenetic and over-the-top gameplay from Fear. If you've got a PC that can handle it, I would definitely recommend you pick up this game as soon as you can, either on Steam or goodoldgames.com. As, like I said, it's some of the most insane fun I've had with a first-person shooter since Doom Eternal, and if you've never played the original Fear, I'd also recommend rectifying that oversight in your life. If you don't currently have a PC capable of running Trepang 2, there is a console release slated for November this year, if you have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. Anyway, those have been my thoughts on Trepang 2. Do let me know in the comments what you think if you've played it yourself, and I am curious, did anyone enjoy Fear 3? But until next time, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and you can support the channel further on Patreon. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you all in the next video.